Stopping your beard going ginger is far more difficult than you think. You can't just take like a magic pill. You can't just use some sort of magic potion on your beard. It all comes down to your genetics. But there is a glimmer of hope from science, which we'll talk about in this video. It's an up-to-date study of all of the different medications that have uh, changed the uh, color of hair. It's pretty interesting. So we'll cover it in this video. And also I'm gonna share with you the kind of ways, the quick hacks, if you will, of making sure that your beard doesn't go ginger or if it does, how to cover it up easily. This video is based on an article on beardgrowingpro.com. I'll put a link in the description, but also go and check out beardgrowingpro.com because it is absolutely jam-packed with every beard question answered. It is growing at a rate of knots, and over the next few months, it will pass about 250 articles of every beard question that you've ever considered. Go check it out. I've got bad news and good news for you. The bad news is it's your genetics that is determining the color of your beard and your hair. Now, I found a 2019 study that essentially said that even within a general population, there are a wide range of colors, of shades, of different sort of like uh, patterns of beard colors and hair colors. So it really sort of highlights to me how important genetics are in determining this. Ultimately, your genetics determine how many uh, pigment molecules like melanin um, that get incorporated into your beard as it grows. So there's two types of melanin. There's like a reddish one and there's also a yellowish one um, and they get sort of mixed up. I think it's actually brown and black and red and yellow anyway, but those two types get mixed up. If you wanna know more about why your beard goes orange, go check out my other video where I go through all of the genetics and I even go down to the like chemical structures of these pigments. So go check it out, I'll put a link here. So it's your genetics this determining which molecules are ending up in your hair and your beard. So you can't really f sort of fight it, I don't think. But there is a glimmer of hope from modern science. So I sort of like looked at all the peer reviewed literature and I found this study. It was published in 2020. And what it looked at, it was like a meta study. So that's a study that looks at studies. And uh, it was looking at loads of different experiments, medications that actually caused gray hair to turn sort of back to its original color. And it found that if it was an immunosuppressant um, and it inhibited kind of inflammation, that was an indicator. Or also, if it stimulated what they called melanogenesis, so, so essentially the, the, the making of melanin in your skin. So some medications can sort of boost that uh, production. And then of course, once it's being made, it can get incorporated into your beard. And the last thing they said is that there was kind of low level, uh, kind of uh, low quality studies that looked at vitamin B complexes, that looked at turning gray hair into darker hair. Now, that science was a little bit shady, but what all this does is it gives us an inkling, a little indication that science will solve this problem eventually. Because if you have a light beard, if you have a ginger beard, if you have an orange beard, and you wanna make it darker, there are potentially some chemicals out there that will boost the amount of melanin that are produced at the bottom of your hairs in the hair follicle and then they'll get incorporated as they grow. So we're not there yet. This study was 2020 um, and so just watch this space. But in the meantime, here are the things that you can do to stop your beard going orange. They're not pretty, but they work. This is pretty brutal, but the first one is just to pluck out the hairs that you don't like. Like I've got a load of different colors in my beard. I've got orange, I've got sort of auburn, I've got dark, I've got brown, I'm starting to get grays. Now I've decided I'm gonna let my beard be my beard. I'm just gonna let it do what it wants. If it wants to go a bit gray, no problem. But some people don't like that and uh, they wanna pluck out hairs, which is absolutely fine. It's a bit painful. I've done it a couple of times. It's, you know, it's not, it's not ideal deal. But 
Plucking out hairs, if you've just got one or two orange hairs, it's absolutely fine, but be very careful because the bottom of the hair is the root. If you damage the root, you can actually stop that root from producing a hair altogether um, by sort of ripping out its blood supply, by uh, damaging the kind of uh, the bulb right at the very bottom of the hair. So uh, just be very careful if you are going to pluck hairs all of the time because if you have got a thin beard, you could potentially thin it out even more. Not only that, it's a bit painful. So uh, yeah, plucking out is a solution if you don't have many of these sort of orange hairs and you want to get rid of them. Um, but the only other option for you is to use a dye, whether that's permanent or temporary. I recommend that if you want to get rid of your orange hairs, the best way to do it is actually just dye your hair. There is a number of natural hair dyeing uh, products such as, uh, I think it's the Grizzly Bear Mountain Beard Dye or something like that, but also using henna powder. Um, stick to the natural ones um, because if you've got a dark beard and you just want to cover up the, uh, the, the oranges, I feel like it's a little bit more natural. If your hair is sort of like really, really light and you do want to darken it, that's when you do have to go for the more serious products like that from Just For Men um, or other kind of like well-known brands and really sort of hardcore dyes. Um, it's, you know, that's absolutely fine. That's completely up to you. So uh, yeah, use dyes because they last for much longer. But if you just want to touch up your beard for like an evening out and you just want to sort of get rid of those problem hairs, there are a range of temporary solutions which actually work relatively well. And uh, let's take a look at those now. Temporary cover-ups include beard pens, beard like lipstick things, beard fibers and beard powders. All of these, go check out the article. So I, I just sort of like list all of them and you can go and buy them. They are designed specifically for beards. Now some of them wash out much easier than others. They're all temporary, which means that, you know, when you have your shower, it will fall out, it will leave, and you just have to sort of reapply, but that's absolutely fine. I find that I use these sort of things if I just want my beard to look like like extra little bit special. So if I just want my beard to, uh, you know, get rid of some of the oranges, get rid of some of the grays, just cover it up. But I don't want to sort of change it forever. I don't want to commit to like a darker beard, like when I use a dye. Um, you know, that is what I highly recommend. So just look at some of these temporary beard solutions. I was very skeptical, but having looked at them, they seem absolutely sort of perfect for a range of temporary temporary darkening solutions. And if you don't want to commit, if you're a bit of a commitment foe and you don't want to commit to a dark beard for a long period of time, they are perfect for trying it out before you take that big leap to dyeing your beard. The last thing you can do, which is one of the hardest things to do, is just to accept your beard for what it is. Accept the colors, accept the uh, nuances, the things that you're not very happy with, all of these things make your beard unique. And I know it's easier said than done, but now you know about genes, you know about the melanin, you know about the pigments that get incorporated into your hair, and you know a little bit about the science that could solve this problem in the future, I feel like acceptance and controlling what you can actually control and letting go of the things you can't control, i.e. your genetics, will result in a much better outcome for you, it'll make you happier, make you love your beard more, and I think that that is the way forward for any beard grower. So there we have it, in this article we've looked at all of the things you can do to cover up your beard going ginger, how to stop it going ginger, unfortunately it's all about fighting your genes, which you can't do just yet, but these medications that inhibit inflammation, stimulate melanogenesis, and there's vitamin B complex, low quality studies, mind you, at the moment, that give us a little indication that eventually, this is the problem we'll be able to solve with uh, medication, with taking a pill, with a topical cream, that sort of stuff. So watch this space.